Okay. So good afternoon, researchers. I am Mike Uy, and together with me here is Brent Abriega, and we will be presenting our research entitled a preliminary study on the chiral vector approach in determining the optimum structure of carbon nanotubes and its correlation to the chemical potential energy using Avogadro. Okay, so to give a background of our research, we shall first define what is a carbon nanotube, or for short, a CNT. If you are familiar with graphene, well, a CNT is essentially a rolled up version of it, and it can be classified based on how many walls or layers it has and based on its chiral vectors. The chiral vectors is a convention used to describe the orientation as to how the graphene is rolled up into a carbon nanotube. So imagine rolling a piece of paper in different directions. The n comma m in chiral vectors is similar to Cartesian coordinates, but not entirely because it is based on a hexagonal grid. Okay, next slide. So here are images depicting the classifications of carbon nanotubes based on their number of walls or layers. So a single walled CNT has only one layer, a double walled CNT has two layers, and a multi-walled CNT has three or more layers. Okay. So next, here are images showing the different classifications of CNTs based on their chiral vectors. So when n equals m, the carbon nanotube is said to have an armchair structure. When n equals zero or m equals zero, it is said to have a zigzag structure. And when it's, it's neither armchair nor zigzag, then it is said to have a chiral structure. Okay, so to rationalize our research, we looked at existing literature and found that no studies have used virtual simulations to investigate the chemical potential energy of a CNT. Also, no studies were found describing the effects of changing a CNT's chiral vectors to its chemical potential energy. So with that, our study aimed to fill the gap in analyzing the relationship between chiral vectors and the chemical potential energy of CNTs. Okay, so moving on to our objectives. Our main objective was to simulate carbon nanotubes with varying chiral vectors to find a structure with the highest chemical potential energy. To achieve our main objective, we laid out specific objectives. So we wanted to find the chiral vector pairings needed in building the carbon nanotube structure with a set number of 100 atoms. Next, we wanted to simulate carbon nanotubes with varying chiral vectors and get their chemical potential energy. Next, we wanted to sort the data according to the structure with the highest chemical potential energy. And lastly, we wanted to, to use correlation to find the relationship between chiral vectors and energy. So moving on to our scope and limitations, we limited our research to studying only single walled carbon nanotubes because they are simpler but have higher electrical properties. Also, they are the most studied type of carbon nanotube. We also limited how many atoms were in our CNT structures to 100 atoms or 102 atoms if 100 atoms was not possible. So this was done to standardize our data. We also limited the chiral vectors, uh, chiral vector values to only zero to three. Lastly, we limited our research to the three known classifications of single walled CNTs, which are armchair, chiral, and zigzag. Okay, next for the significance of our research, our study contributes to the body of knowledge regarding CNTs and their relation to chemical potential energy, which can be related to electrical energy. So with this, our study could find applications in the battery industry and contribute to the sustainable energy effort. Our study could also provide valuable information for future researchers. Furthermore, using simulation prevents unnecessary effort and laborious work. And since the simulation is in a virtual environment, 
It is cheaper and requires lesser materials and equipment than actual laboratory work. Bren, your, uh, please turn on your mic. Okay, so to explain how this research was conducted, let us first take a look at our research design. Figure one is the flowchart of our methodology. As you can see, we, so we first selected different chiral vector pairs, and then we simulated them using Avogadro. Once the nanogens were simulated, the chemical potential energy of these molecules were calculated and then subsequently analyzed using multiple correlation. All of those will be explained later. Next slide. First, for our data collection method, we had to decide on what our primary data was going to be. We settled on two types of data. First, CNT structures in the form of images and chemical potential energy in terms of what Avogadro calculates for these structures. For the simulation, Carroll vector pairs were first selected by choosing a maximum value, in this case three, and producing all variations with a few exceptions. Because in theory, we would have 16 different carbon nanogy to simulate. However, there, there is a limitation with the chiral vector notation in that either N or M must be greater than one. This means that chiral vectors 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 are not possible. Therefore, only 12 out of the six theoretical pairs were simulated. Also, the lengths of these carbon nanogens were modified in order to keep the number of atoms at 100 or 102. This is because the next lowest after 100 after 102 is 96, which is close, which is further away from 100 than 102. Next slide. Once these carbon nanogens were simulated, the energy calculation was done by Avogadro using the Merck Molecular Force Field or MMFF94 calculations. In particular, MMFF94S, with the S standing for static. The simulation was done using a laptop with the specifications listed below. For our data collection instruments, you may notice that we only used one, which is Avogadro a free open source and cross-platform molecular editor developed by Avogadro Chemistry. It has many features, but we shall only focus on three which were relevant to our research. First is a nanotube builder that can create different types of nanotubes depending on the parameters given to it. It can also optimize the geometry of molecules through the optimized geometry tool, which gives proper bound angles and lengths. Lastly, it can calculate the energy of a system through its calculate energy function. Again, through MMFF94S. For our data analysis, a chiral vector pair versus energy graph was created to usually visualize the trend between the three variables and compare the difference in the energy output of different chiral vector pairs. For our statistical tools, we used multiple correlation to analyze the data. For that, a corresponding scatter plot was also used to further visualize the correlation between the two chiral vectors and energy. In order to account for two variables at once and to avoid having to use a 3D graph, we use the unstandardized predicted value of the energy to account for the two parallel vectors, which are the independent variables. This was then plotted against the energy to create the scatter plot. Other statistical tools used were IBM SPSS for data analysis and Microsoft Excel for data tabulation. And now for our results. The next few slides will, sh will show images of our results. The first one is a chiral vector, a CNT with chiral vectors 1, 2, which it means it is a chiral CNT. This is a chiral CNT with chiral vectors 2, 1. Zigzag with chiral vectors 0, 3. Zigzag with chiral vectors 0, 2. Zigzag once more with chiral vectors 3, 0. Zigzag with chiral vectors 2, 0. Armchair with chiral vectors 2, 2. Chiral with chiral vectors 1, 3. Chiral with chiral vectors 3, 1. Chiral with chiral vectors 2, 3. 
Carol with Carol Vectors 3 2. And lastly, Armchair with Carol Vectors 3 3. These CNTs were arranged in order of highest energy obtained versus to, least en to lowest energy obtained. Now, Table 1 shows the results of our CNT simulations tabulated, showing all the data that we managed to collect from the images shown earlier. Next slide. Figure 14 shows the chiral vector pairs arranged in order of highest to lowest chemical potential energy, which is measured in kilojoules per mole. As you can see, chiral vectors 1, 2, and 2, 1 exhibited the highest chemical potential energy per given number of atoms, which in this case is 100 or 102, again, if 100 is not possible. What's also worth noting is that different variants of the same type of CNT have different energy values. For example, armchair CNTs 2, 2, and 3, 3 have different energy values, but you can also observe that 0, 3, and 3, 0 have somewhat significant difference in their chemical potential energy despite having the same arrow vectors only being reversed. Okay, so next we have our statistical analysis. So table two shows our model summary of the multiple correlation coefficient done through IBM SPSS. Shown here is the correlation between our independent variables, which were the chiral vector pairs, and the dependent variable, which was the chemical potential energy output. So we got an R square value of 0.632, indicating a small positive correlation. Next slide, please. So next, uh, figure 15 shows a visual representation of our data through a scatter plot and linear regression done with the aid of IBM SPSS. The figure plots the energy output against the unstandardized predicted value. The unstandardized predicted value accounts for the chiral vector pairs and an M. Moreover, the figure shows an R square value of 0.632, which indicates a small positive correlation as mentioned earlier, and is consistent with the R square value shown in table two. Okay. To conclude, we used Avogadro as a simulator for 12 different carbon nanotubes with different chiral vector pair values, and the chemical potential energy of these carbon nanotubes were calculated. As we observed in figure 14 earlier, chiral CNTs with chiral vector values 1, 2, and 2, 1 yielded the highest energy of 12,946.344 kilojoules per mole and 12,675.248 kilojoules per mole, respectively. The data was analyzed for multiple correlation, and we found an R-squared value of 0.632 was obtained, indicating a small correlation between the variables. Here is what we recommend for future studies, perhaps on the same topic. Further simulations can be done with structures not necessarily related to carbon nanotubes. Also, multiple simulations of the same chiral vector pair can be done, and the average value of these simulations can be used and analyzed in the same way that we did for our single sample points. So these are the reference that we used. Uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>